In today's chapter, Hazel Whitehead remembers back to the time of the first lockdown when there was panic buying. And there were even times when healthcare workers and people on the front line were unable to buy basic food stuffs because the shops were empty, the shelves were empty. She calls it our daily bread. Give us this day our daily bread. Don't give us enough daily bread for the next seven years, seven days. Give us today our daily bread. And it's a really hard one because we're used to being comfortable. We're used to knowing where the next meal comes from. Certainly I am. So my sessions at the food bank are a stark reminder to me that that is not the case for the majority of people. I'm talking about the majority worldwide do not live with the level of comfort and security that I live with. And this comes up over and over again in the Gospels, in particular in Luke's Gospel. Think of those, she says, with empty tummies. If someone asks for you for your coat and you have to give them your coat, says John the Baptist in Luke's Gospel. Jesus goes on to reiterate this. Love your neighbour as yourself. Love not just your sister and brother, that's easy. Love the people it's hard to love. Maybe hard because they are far away and therefore our empathy does not stretch so far. Very soon after, in the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus says, Woe to you who are full now, for you will be hungry. Well, I have been full. I have water. I'm very lucky in lockdown, we already had a milk delivery, so my milk is delivered. My daily bread is delivered. I buy in bulk, so I have massive sacks of flour. I buy bulk spices at the back there. You can see my cumin and water constantly from the tap. So my neighbors in my road have plenty. They live the comfortable life that I lead. So where does this take me when I'm thinking about these passages? Well, Hazel helps me. She says, we are reminded of the interdependence of all nations and countries. So my neighbor is creation and is all the people in creation. And while there are people anywhere in the world who do not have the comforts that I have, I am instructed in the Gospels to share. And I know that's not straightforward, but that is the stark truth. The stark truth is we have to start thinking in places where we have that level of security. Where does that security come from? What is it founded upon? Is my dairy milk actually harming the environment? Would it be better if I used a milk alternative that produced less methane? But more importantly, all the things in our lives connect us to other people. Not more importantly, as importantly. And I want to leave you today with a reflection upon where the things that you surround yourself with come from and how they connect you to other people, the material of them. How are you connected by the items of clothing you're wearing and the food on your plate to somebody you do not see, who may not, almost certainly does not, have the same quality of life as you do? And what does that mean to us as Christians? We'll be thinking about this during Lent when we launch on Sunday our Lent Food Challenge, in which we invite people to consider their food choices and how they impact upon their neighbour, wherever their neighbour may be. Are we 
living lives that are sustainable not only for us, but for creation and for other people. Are we giving a coat away because we have two? Or are we storing stuff up just in case and not remembering the instruction? To consider our daily bread. And Rachel, of course, directs us to the Lord's Prayer. Let us pray. Creator God, we give thanks for the gifts of plenty that we experience. And we pray for discernment in how we can alter the way we live and the lifestyles of our world that all may have sufficient that each one of us has our daily bread and can live in trust and faith in your provision because of the world that you provided that can sustain us all may we learn this lent to love our neighbour who is connected to us but whom we cannot see as well as we love ourselves. Amen. <laughs>